Joining me for a closer look at what's playing itself out in that market scene is Wayne McCurry from FNB Wealth and Investments. Wayne, always a pleasure. Good afternoon to you. Hi there. The audio is very poor. I can hardly hear you. It was perfect, but the moment you switched to me, it's gone really bad. But again, uh, are you hearing me better now? I'm hearing you much better now. Thank you. Wonderful, Wayne. Thank you for being with us today. Market's running really hard today. Playing catch up, I think, yes. from what we saw in the U.S. away. Let's just talk about, uh, you know, the, the announcement from the U.S. Fed and how that has given market participants a little bit of confidence. Look, I mean, the overseas markets were strong, obviously, and it's all to do with the U.S. Federal Reserve Bank. Their, their, their comment, really, not, not the meeting outcome. Everyone knew what was that, what that was going to be. But it was a fairly positive uh, statement that they made. And this actually has powered our market forward and it's pushed the shares that it should have pushed up, up. And those are the mining shares because those are the ones that suffer the most when people are worried when are interest rates going to be cut, how long have we got to wait? Whereas there was a little bit more confirmation from the Fed that, you know, interest rate cuts are coming three this year, maybe four, but probably only three. And that's why the mining shares are running. And as you said, the platinum shares in particular are really leading the market forward. I will tell you, Wayne, that what we are seeing also, though, is some rand weakness. And I'm wondering if that has anything to do with uh, that uh, Fed announcement yesterday, because, I mean, the rand is trading very close to that 19 rand to the dollar market. Of course, it is a psychological uh, threshold, but it matters. Yeah, look, I'm very, I'm very uh, surprised the rand's not stable to strong given what all the shares are doing and given what the Fed said. Now, when the announcement came out from the Fed, the rand strengthened to 1860. And all of a sudden, it's now 19 a day later. So the rand's doing the rand's doing what it should not be doing. Under this environment, it should be strengthening. So it's actually, I find it quite surprising that it has gone back to the 19 level. You know, maybe there's particular market circumstances in South Africa that's causing that. But I would think, given the overall environment, the RAND shouldn't be weak. So maybe it will strengthen over the next couple of days and, and almost catch up with the shares. Really hoping so, uh, Wayne. I'm also keen just to get your thoughts here on an article I would have uh, run into earlier with Vanguard, of course, a very big asset manager in the United States. They don't believe that there'll be any interest rate cuts this year. And I'm wondering if that is just being, uh, you know, contrary to uh, the public uh, opinion on this issue, that they just believe that there is no room and it's very possible that we won't uh, see that. I haven't seen markets reacting to it, but I guess they're the only ones standing no. against what the Fed is saying at this point. Well, they're certainly taking a very contrarian view. But, you know, nobody knows the future. The Fed doesn't know the future. Brokers don't know the future. I don't know the future. So we could very well get no interest rate cuts, but that will only be because inflation goes up, and that's data dependent. I mean, the Fed's also dependent on what data comes out over the year. You know, I've read some stories that we're going to get four interest rate cuts, so, you know, uh, a full 1% cut over the over the next year. I think there's going to be three, but I mean, I, I don't know either. Every single thing is sp specifically related to these interest rates is inflation and wage data dependent. So if the, if the data comes out over the next month or two or three, you know, positive, then of course, there'll be no one saying no interest rate cuts. If the data comes out negative, everyone will say no interest rate cuts so you know once again this is just the market the market is made up of diverse views the only good thing about the market is you eventually know if you're right or wrong i must also ask you about i think the most interesting one for me this week is the listing of reddit that ipo uh reddit has been around for 19 years when it's taken 19 years for them to list and actually the markets received them well that share price peaked at a 70 yes. percent increase can you get your thoughts on this one well, look, there's certainly some very happy Reddit shareholders that got that managed to get something in the in in a, at the listing price at the IPO price. So they've done extremely well. But of course, they're jumping on the bandwagon. It's a very good reason why they didn't list up until now is they thought they would get a higher price when they did list. And obviously, they think conditions are perfect now, given the surge. I know they're not AI per se, but given the surge in tech shares and AI etc 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 now is the time to list and there may be a little bit of a warning in there for share prices 
in tech shares because you're only going to list it when you think you're getting a seriously good price for your company. If you thought the share market's still going to go up strongly, you wouldn't be listing now. They obviously don't need the money to do it. But yeah, um, there certainly has been a nice stag profit for the, 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 the shareholders who got their shares before they actually started to trade. A little bit closer to home today, I think we heard of two disposals. Telcom, I think, uh, finally getting uh, that SwiftNet business off their balance sheet. Also, Transaction Capital uh, looking at disposing Newton Australia. Just keen to get your thoughts on those yeah. ones, Wayne. Well, look, I must say, I didn't know they were going to dispose of Newton, of, of any of the Newton branches. So maybe I was just didn't know about it or hadn't done my research. But it came to me as a bit of a surprise that they're selling Newton. But obviously, the share liked it because they getting in at, what's it, one, you know, it's about, about 80 million US dollars, which will all help their, their debt and try and settle some of their debt. It'll help them enormously. And of course, with the We Buy Cars listing coming up quite soon as well, that will all help transaction capital. And last time I, look, I looked, I saw the, uh, the share was up about 5%. And uh, uh, you're with SwiftNet, I'm also keen to get your thoughts on that one. It's a 6.75 billion rand that Telcom is getting for that business. I saw the share price also uh, in the green by more than 5%. Shareholders welcoming yes. that one. I think that's been on the cards for quite a while, Wayne. Oh, no, they've been talking about this for a very, very long time. But it's actually happened now, and that is good news. Because, you know, Telcom's in a very, very difficult situation. They actually, and and Salsi, Salsi is even worse off. They actually can't compete against the two big gorillas because to compete, you need deep, deep pockets because you've got to roll out network. And of course, the network changes all the time. It's advancing all the time. There's always upgrades. There's always new technology. And the smaller players just haven't got the capital expenditure to go out and actually put in their own network and get a wide coverage. So what they've got to do is they've got to piggyback or one of the two other players and you lose your margin. So they're in a very, very difficult position, and any capital will help them to roll out their own network, which they will then make full margin on. Brilliant, Wayne. I want to get your stock pick in a bit, but first I'd like us uh, to uh, reflect on counters that have found favour with some of your industry peers. Uh, Adobe uh, is uh, one of those uh, companies. Uh, we all know it from our PDFs uh, and the like that we've been using for many, many years, but uh, they're so much uh, more than that. Um, Photoshop is uh, is one of their applications, but again, I think they are well placed. Um, you know, one initially had thought that uh, maybe the uh, the AI, the generative AI, might start eating their lunch, and we we'll see uh, many other competitors come uh, and uh, you know dip into their their profits. But I think it is a company that uh, that actually will benefit. They uh, they clearly know what they they have a clear history of uh, of knowing what they're doing in the space. And uh, I think it's a, it's a nice way also to play uh, that AI theme a little bit differently. And uh, yeah, uh, I think a good stalwart for portfolios going forward. The counter that I'm loving this afternoon is Novo Nordisk. Now, needless to say, I think many of you will think I'm quite late to this, and that's not too unfair. Mm -hmm. You know, much <laughs> has been made of those GLP-1 weightless weight loss drugs. And Novo were actually the first to market here with Ozempic, and of the, on the back of that, they actually became the biggest company in Europe. That being said, I still think there's quite a bit of room for growth here, and potentially these drugs are still a bit undervalued. I think they could have sort of a lot more use cases than were initially anticipated. I think within the sector it does make sense to have at least some exposure here i'm not really too particular about whether that is eli Lilly or nova i like both the companies i think they've got great pipelines the both of them but really the crux of the issue here is uh, those glp1 drugs the weight loss drugs so uh, I i've got to i've got to acknowledge that you know both of them are a little bit pricey currently but long term the case is still strong and you know it does make sense to have one personally i'm going for novo since they're slightly cheaper but also a bit more diversified. You know, Wayne, keen to get your thoughts on some of those counters, Adobe as well as a Novo Nordisk. Well, Adobe, I do agree. I mean, we all know it so well. It's a well-established company, been around for a long time. And I mean, I'm always using their software, whether to download stuff that's sent to me or take photographs or scan things and send it on. So, I mean, it's well-established. They've been, they've been able to weather all types of competition, they're still there, they haven't been replaced. I don't think AI is a big threat to them, and they can also adapt to it. So I do agree with Adobe. Look, 
on on the Nova Nordisk, man, could be coming to the party a little bit late. Yeah, I I just don't know. Um, you know, this whole new weight loss thing. I mean, this is like almost the medical equivalent of AI. And sometimes these things just go up and up and up forever on the back of this new idea, this new drug. And of course, it's not the only new drug. They've got well-established uh, product line. They've got other products in the pipeline as well. But I would maybe be a little bit cautious because I think even though obviously the share could still go up, it will start to enter, you know, maybe territory that's just too expensive. With that said, Wayne, a keen to get which counter you're loving today? Man, I'm going to put my neck out there, and this will be the third time we're seeing some sort of rally, and I'm going to go for Anglo-American Platinum. Mm -hmm. I mean, the price fell through last year already, through 1,000 Rand, ended up at 640. It rallied like crazy in December, got to almost 1,000 again. Then January and February, it went all the way down to 650. Then it rallied to about 900. Then it went back to 650. And now it seems to be going up again. So it's the third time we've had some sort of rally in these platinum shares. And as long as the interest rates cuts come and as long as inflation doesn't surprise on the upside, the mining shares, I, I genuinely think, is the place to be, maybe worldwide, not just in South Africa, over the next two to three years. Of course, this might not be the start. But on a two to three year basis, as long as we get interest rate cuts, we should get a commodity upcycle. And these shares have been battered. And that's where the, the returns will actually be, I think, over the next two or three years. Well, Wayne, it's been a pleasure hearing from you. Thank you so much for wrapping the week up for us here on Business Lunch. That was your midday markets update with Wayne McCurry from F&B Wealth and Investments.